Today, I'm doing a collaboration with Ashley from Create Craft Costume, and we are making Niffler treat jars. So like I said, this jar is going to be a collaboration. So Ashley from Create Craft Costume actually reached out to me and said, hey, I would love to do some kind of DIY video together in honor of the new Fantastic Beasts movie coming out. And she said, what do you think about doing a Niffler treat jar? And I immediately was like, yes, no problem. Let's do it. And she was like, do you think you could make the label and then we can both make our jars? So that is what I did. I went ahead and designed the label, sent her the file. So what I'm going to do is show you how I make my Niffler treat jar. And then at the end, I'm going to show you what Ashley's Niffler treat jar looks like. And if you go over to her channel, she's going to show you how she made hers. And then she will show you her reaction to my jar at the end of that. And uh, for those of you who are here from Ashley's channel, the link for the label is in the description down below. And if you guys are new here, welcome. And we do all kinds of geeky, fantastic, magical crafts over here. Things from potions to props, you name it, we do it. And uh, we kind of touch base on a little bit of all of the magical genres. It could be things like Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts, but we've also done Halloween Town and Casper you name it. And uh, I also have 50 magical crafts in my book, The Wizard's Craft Book. So you guys can check all of that out in the link down below. So now that we've gone through all that, let's go ahead and start making magic. The things we'll need to create our Niffler treats is one glass bottle. I picked this one up at Hobby Lobby. It's an 18 ounce bottle and I'll try to put a similar one in the description down below. We are going to be using some silver hot glue, but you could also use some silver sealing wax. And then I'm also going to accompany that with some gold leafing. I have a brush to brush off the excess gold leafing as well as some pliers. I have some black cording here. And then we're also gonna need an assortment of different shiny things. So that could be clearance jewelry. That could be things that you found at an antique store, like this bag of assorted jewelry here. It could be the lost earring that you've never found the match to. It could be costume jewelry maybe you got from a great aunt or a grandma or something like that. Anything that's shiny is game for this bottle. And then finally, we will need our label printed on sticker paper and the link for this is in the description down below. Let's get started. So as you can see, I have a whole bunch of different stuff. Some of it's antique, some of it is off the clearance rack, some of it is new, some of it is just stuff that I had that was missing its friend, like a pair of earrings. So we are just gonna start to fill our jar with the assortment of all of our little shiny things until we get the look we're going for. So like I said, I went to my local antique store and one of and me and my sister found these great bags of assorted things. And, you know, it might have been like things like one earring or a broken chain. I mean, you name it, it was in there. And there are several really beautiful things in these bags as well. But I just thought, you know, for $4, you really can't beat it. And you might be able to find some things like this at Goodwill and things like that. And like I said, I got this whole box of beads at Hobby Lobby for two twenty four. dollars So you really can't beat it. And, you know, you just kind of have to be smart about it. You don't want to spend a lot of money on what's in these jars. But at the same time, you want it to look nice and authentic. And when I thought of Niffler treats, I wanted to keep mine with a kind of vintage 1920s vibe just because that's when Fantastic Beasts is filmed but you could definitely make this for like the Nifflers that Hagrid had so it could be old coins it could be anything like that but I just loved the idea of reusing something that otherwise might be in a landfill so we're gonna go ahead and just start to fill this up and we'll see where we get once we get everything in the jar so when you're making a jar like this, it's important to remember that the stuff that's in the middle is going to get lost. So if you don't have a ton of jewelry, you could definitely put some crumpled up tissue paper or even like a styrofoam cone or dowel in there. I mean, you name it, you could definitely fill the center up. And we may do that um, with something that's not the actual beads. And then that way it just makes sure that all of the good stuff is on the outside. Um, if you do have enough beads, etc., to fill the whole jar... I highly recommend that you make sure that the pieces that you really love, like this cool old uh, brooch, things like that, that those end up on the outside of the jar so that you actually get to see them. Because if they're in the middle, you're not going to get to see them and enjoy them. And then, you know, that really cool piece is lost. Okay, so since the bottom is kind of lost, I'm just going to take some of these clearance beads and we're going to start to put them in the jar first.
And like, this was a bag of beads that I picked up from Michael's for a couple bucks. So we're just gonna kind of put some of those in there as well. Now, obviously I'm not gonna leave it layered like that. So I'm gonna just kind of cap this up and give us a good shake. So all of that can kind of mix up. I got some cheaper looking little rhinestone gems here. We're gonna stick some of those in there and we're gonna do the same thing once I get them in. We're just gonna kinda give it a good shake. So this was a chain that uh, is a multi necklace. This is like a draping necklace that was in that antique bag. And um, I, I just love how it's got all these different textures and chains. So I actually think I'm gonna take my pliers and kind of take some of these apart so that when I put them in here, we're not just getting a big old clump of chain. I'd like to kind of feed them through a little bit separately. Okay, so I separated quite a few of them. I did leave a couple on here because I did just like that the few on there with the two circle um, ends would just kind of be a nice touch. So I'm going to kind of put this in here. I'm going to see if I can get it up against this edge and kind of swirl it a little bit. Yeah, that way it's not just in the middle or just on an end. And we're just going to continue to fill this up. So I got my jar filled up and I think it looks really great. We have all these different shiny things and you kind of can just keep spinning the jar and seeing different things, which I love and I feel like is very Niffler-esque. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and cap this up. And I did try to make this a little bit fuller just so then that way if you shook it up, it's not going to move a whole lot. And now we're going to go ahead and finish up our bottle. Okay, so now that we have everything in the jar, we're going to pick a side to put our label on. So I actually think this might be my least favorite side. There's like the least going on right in here besides the key, which is fine because it's a pretty plain key. Um, so I think I'm going to put my label here. Just then that way we can still see all the cool stuff around it. So I'm going to go ahead and take the backing paper off. And again, I always print my labels on sticker paper. And I go around the outside edge with a matching marker just to make everything look a little more complete. There's a little bit of a curve up here, so I'm just trying to rub everything down good over that curve. Okay, and I think that looks pretty good. So now we're gonna wrap the neck of our bottle with our black cording. Okay, so now that everything is wrapped, I have my silver hot glue here 
and I am going to go all the way over top of the cork, sealing everything in. And while the glue is still hot, we're going to dip it into the gold leaf like we did with our Elixir of Life potion, which should give this a very like silver gold metallic molten look on the top, which again, I think any Niffler would love. And again, if you use a hot glue gun and it doesn't drip as well as you'd like it to, all you have to do is take a heat gun and just briefly go over the whole thing. It'll kind of warm it up enough that it'll all flow and continue to drip the way you want it to. Okay, so that hot glue gun is getting retired because it did not do a very good job. But I was able to get at least a base coating up here. And again, I'm just going to use my heat gun to... I'm going to move the gold leafing because that would be bad. Um, I'm going to uh, heat everything up a little bit to get it all moving and a little bit more liquefied. And then we'll go ahead and put it into our gold leafing. Okay, and now that everything is kind of liquefied, we're just going to do a quick dunk. Okay, we're going to let that cool for a minute. We will come back and I'll show you how I fluff all of that off and we get our really cool molten effect. Would you like a chance to win one of my potion bottles? Then consider supporting me over on Patreon. All of my patrons have a chance to win a monthly potion bottle. Link is in the description down below. So now that everything has cooled, I'm going to take my brush here and I'm going to brush off the excess gold leafing back into my jar because you can always reuse your leftover gold leafing. And I know I'm not all the way done, but you can just see you get this beautiful like molten metal look to it that just gives a really cool quality. And I love the contrast of the silver and the gold together. And we're just going to continue to do this and get it nice and smooth and all burnished in on our glue here. Again, you could do the same thing with a wax seal too. Okay, and once we burnish off all of the excess gold leafing, we are left with this beautiful, shiny, molten looking metal drip. And I just love how the silver and gold play with each other and I think it's perfect for this bottle. There we have it. We have our beautiful shiny jar full of Niffler treats that's perfect to help locate a lost Niffler or to praise your Niffler. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at what Ashley from Create Craft Costume did with her Niffler jar and then we'll wrap this up for you. So I love Ashley's jar. I think she did a great job. I'm always happy to collaborate with my fellow crafters. And when Ashley suggested this uh, jar, I just thought it would be a really fun one to do, especially since Fantastic Beasts Secrets of Dumbledore is right around the corner. And I am super excited for it. So I think that about wraps it up. So our Niffler treats will be a great addition to our potion and prop collection we've been making along the way. So if you guys like this video, give me the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And we will catch you guys later. Thanks so much.